Good evening and welcome to this Christmas Eve celebration service of carols and lessons. I'm so glad that you joined us and uh, we want to give God the glory for this time and the folks that were involved in this that gave up their time to um, put together this particular service. God bless you. Bethlehem. Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. Episcopalian priest Phillips Brooks in 1868 wrote this beautiful carol that captures the wonder of the infant king. Lewis Redner added the melody that has the feel of a lullaby and together they allow us to approach the baby, the baby's manger, and take a peek inside. The third verse describes the miracle of the moment we celebrate tonight. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming. But in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. As we light the candle of Christ, may we carry the light of our redemption into the world that all people may catch the Spirit. Let us pray. Jesus, our Messiah, we celebrate your arrival with gratitude. Our lives are marked by your light, even when our circumstance might prove to the contrary. May we hold this light in our heart and reflect it to a darkened world in the year to come. Amen. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all people. For to you is born in this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Is this not the Christmas story? Plain and simple, unadorned, unpretentious, no embellishments, no luxury. Jesus was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And on that night, an angel appeared to shepherds in the fields east of the village and told them that they would find the Savior of the world, Christ the Messiah, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. A simple birth. A simple setting, and yet so profoundly significant by its simplicity. The Savior of the world, born in a humble stable in Bethlehem. A simple story to remember. Have you ever wondered why the story was so simple? Why Jesus wasn't born in Jerusalem at the temple? To a priestly family on a high feast day when crowds of pilgrims could celebrate his birth with their prayers and sacrifices or at Herod's palace where a regal court robes and royal garments could greet his arrival with pontifical proclamations and sumptuous banquets instead the Messiah was born to a carpenter and his wife in a stable, a cave, 
carved from stone on the edge of town with only simple shepherds to witness the event. Could it be that God's way is usually the simple way? God did choose Moses to lead his chosen people out of Egypt. Moses was a Hebrew raised as an Egyptian, the least likely candidate for the task. And God chose David, Jesse's youngest son, and still just a shepherd boy to be Israel's greatest king. And God did speak to the prophet Elijah, not in the earthquake, the wind, or the storm, but in a still, small voice. So God's Messiah was born in a stable, a simple birth, yet full of splendor nonetheless. Yes, yes, God's way is the simple way after all. And our celebration of Jesus' birth can be simple too because the story itself is full of splendor and wonder. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. And God chose shepherds that night to witness the birth of his Messiah. Why shepherds, we may ask? Did they claim a special status or deserve God's favor any more than the next person? No, not really. In those days, when Augustus was Caesar and Herod was king, the shepherds of Bethlehem were simple folk in the scheme of life. Their task was simple too, in that they were to keep watch over the chief priest's flock of unblemished sheep, which was set apart for the sacrifices in Jerusalem's temple. The sheep were special, but the shepherds were not. Nor were these shepherds very religious, at least when compared with the Pharisees, the scribes, and the priests. They believed in God and in his holy prophets, and they followed the commandments as best they could, Almost every night around the campfire, they told stories about God and his mighty acts. But these shepherds didn't put much faith in the religion of the Pharisees or the scribes or the priests. They were too busy tending sheep to obey every ritual, rule, and regulation. Water was sparse and used for drinking instead of for ritual washings. The sheep, not religion, 
demanded their full attention. Yet these shepherds were still good people, the salt of the earth. They sought to keep God's commandments and earned an honest living by tending sheep, which didn't even belong to them. Why God chose them instead of the Pharisees, scribes, and priests to be the first to see the Messiah may seem a mystery. But God can see through religious behavior to what really lies within a person. And simple goodness is enough to make a shepherd just as worthy to behold the Messiah as the chief priest himself. God rest you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in bethlehem was born the son of god by name oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas all other doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, Comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. On the night that Jesus was born, the countryside around Bethlehem spread as far as the eye could see in all directions. A vast expanse of great barren hills, rocky and rough. Amidst the rock turfs of grass shot up, tugging at the soil and holding on for dear life. The best pasture in this harsh land was found to the east of town, where groves of trees, short and fat and full, grabbed hold of the land and offered shade from the hot sun. It was here in this eastern pasture where David once watched over his father Jesse's flock. It was here where Samuel anointed David king of Israel. David, Israel's great king, once walked these pastures long ago as a simple shepherd too. Bethlehem's eastern pasture was where the temple's flock of sheep Perfect animals set apart for the high holy sacrifices grazed to their content. It was in this pasture that a group of shepherds camped on that holiest of nights. Shepherds in fields as they 
that same star. Three wise men came from country far to seek for a king was their intent and to follow the star That night, from their hillside camp, the shepherds could see the lights flicker and the shadows dance in the nearby town of Bethlehem. The town was crowded that night, packed with strangers who had come to be counted in the census ordered by Caesar. The gentle breeze had carried the muffled noise of the crowd to their hillside. But now, all has become still as the sleepy town settles down to a night of peaceful slumber. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. On the edge of town, in a cave used as a stable, a carpenter from Nazareth waited anxiously for his wife to give birth to their first child. Since there was no room in Bethlehem's inn for the couple, they found refuge in the stable by the light of an oil lamp and with the smell of fresh hay, their child was born. They called him Jesus. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our king? Yeah. 
bring him incense, gold and myrrh, come peasant king to own him, the king. The sky stretched above their heads, a wondrous tent of dark velvet. Countless stars, tiny diamonds of heaven, dotted the canopy above. To the east, a new star appeared amid the familiar constellations. It was as bright as a brilliant jewel and dazzled the shepherd's eyes with its radiance. Simeon, called one shepherd to another, do you see that star in the east? Is it not new? Yes, Amon, it is a new star, answered Simeon, who knew of stars and signs. Is it a sign of something special? asked Amon. It is, Simeon answered, but I know not of what. As the night air turned chilly, Amon, Simeon, and the other shepherds huddled closer to the small campfire. While Simeon watched the strange star above, he played a new melody on his wooden flute with notes rich in tone and full of splendor. The bright star continued to blaze in the sky. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, Shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on, oh beautiful star. Shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of light. Guiding the pilgrim through the night Over the mountain till the break of dawn, the dawn And into the light of perfect day It will give out a lovely ray Beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine on, shine on Oh beautiful star upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest for the redeemed the good and blessed yonder in glory when the crown is one is one for jesus is now that star divine brighter and brighter he will shine beautiful star of bethlehem shine on shine on oh beautiful star Shine upon us until the glory. 
glory, glory done. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on. Beyond the shepherd's circle, the sheep lay bedded for the night. It was the time that shepherds appreciated most, a time of peace, calm, and contentment. The day's toil was over. It was time for rest and sleep. Eventually, Simeon's notes lulled the last shepherd to sleep. He placed his flute back in his sack and pulled his cloak over his head. Sleep came soon after. The night fell silent with a heavy stillness that lay upon the land like Simeon's thick cloak upon his sleeping body. The stars shone brightly above the peaceful scene with sheep and shepherds fast asleep. Then suddenly, with the brilliance of the noonday sun, a radiance burst forth above the huddled group of sleepy shepherds. Even the shadows were filled with light as darkness vanished from the countryside. Bathed in the supernatural light, they leaped to their feet, hands on their staves, ready to defend themselves and the flock. What is it? shouted Simeon his voice cracking from fear. I can't see. I do not know, Oman answered back. Blinded by the light, perhaps the new star has set fire to the sky. But before they could speak again, a voice from the brilliant vision spoke. Do not be afraid, said the voice. I have good news of great joy. A Savior is born this very night. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. What? They wondered in amazement. A Savior born this night? A Savior? Born this night, here, where? And from the blazing light in the sky, more voices joined the first and sang wondrous praises to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save your sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss the baby, you've kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, 
the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises on the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. When the angels left the shepherds and vanished into the sky, Amon the shepherd said to the others, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And with haste they went to the stable and found Mary and Joseph beside the manger where the child lay. And when they saw this, they shared the angel's message concerning the child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds told them. And the shepherds returned to their fields that night, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, for they had indeed witnessed the greatest event in the history of God and his people, the birth of the Messiah. Their lives would never be the same after that glorious night. In the days to come, they would watch their sheep in the pasture to the east of Bethlehem, and at night they would share by the campfire the story of the birth of Jesus over and over again. A new day had arrived, not only for the people of Israel, but for all people everywhere. The Messiah had finally come. God's people, be they simple and common or wealthy and well-known, would find salvation. So
Merry Christmas.